Hey, it's Crystal, and today I'm going to show you how to make this beaded macrame tree of life. So I'm using a 10 inch wooden ring for this and then some three millimeter single strand cotton cord. And I'll put the cut links and everything down in the description below. But to start, I'm just grabbing one of my cords and folding it in half and attaching it to my wooden ring with a lark said knot. This is actually a cow hitch knot because it's the back side of the lark's head knot, but I wasn't sure if I was going to go with the back side or the front side. I did eventually decide to go with the front side, but it's up to you, whatever you think looks best. Just go ahead and attach all your cords like that and just space them out like this with about an inch in between, roughly. And then we're going to start on the far left two cords. And what we're going to do is just take and twist one of the cords around the other. And it doesn't matter which way you go. It's up to you, whatever you think looks best. But I recommend sticking with one direction once you decide which way you want to go. And wrapping the same cord around for each one. You go ahead and wrap at least about an inch and a half to two inches or so of each pair of cords. And then to secure it so they don't come untwisted, you can tie a half hitch knot like I'm doing here. And in a minute, I'll show you a way I, I realized was better to tie it so that it's easy to untie so we can wrap for the next sections. But for now, I just did a half hitch and later realized it was really a pain to untie it every time. So I'll show you what I did in a minute. I decided that I liked this side better at this point, <laughs> so I'm turning it around. And then I'm going for the next section here. Um, now it's on the right. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap around the same way. And I wanted to wrap each section about a, an inch and a half before I continued on because then I was gonna start connecting them together to make the branches. Okay, real quick, I'm going to show you what I meant by that other way of tying our little half hitch knot. You wrap your cord around, you're going to tie a half hitch, but instead of doing a full one, you just make this loop and then you tighten it with the loop sticking out like that. And then whenever you want to untie it, all you have to do is pull the cord and it comes undone just like a shoelace or something would. It's really a lot easier because I realized I didn't want to be wrapping over those half hitches because it kind of made a bulky section. But you see it just comes right undone. And so that's how I tied the knot so that it wouldn't come untwisted from then on out. And that is all you do, just like that. So here I've gone ahead and wrapped all of the cords about an inch or an inch and a half, whatever you think looks good. And now I'm going to start over here on the left side and I have these three cords that I'm going to attach all together to make a branch, but I'm going to attach the two on the right um, up higher and then bring the left one over in a minute after I wrap a little bit. So to do that, I'm just going to untie that knot on each of these and it's really easy with the, that easy knot. It's going to try to come unwrapped a little. Don't worry about it. Just try to keep everything together as best you can. And then you're going to just hold all your cords together. And what I did was I found the longest cord out of all of those cords, whichever one was longest was what I used. And then I just started wrapping the same way as I was with the single cords, just around all of the cords. And you're just going to want to make sure you don't have any space in between. So you don't have like a gap where it's not wrapped, but this is extremely simple <laughs> and pretty fun actually. So just wrap until, see I had already wrapped this left one a little bit more to make it longer. I knew I wanted to attach it a little bit lower. And then once you reach where you want to attach your next cord, just bring it over and hold it all together. And then again, I switch to whichever cord is longest in all those cords and use it to wrap. And that way you don't have to worry about running out of cord at any point. And I feel like it uses up more so we're not like wasting and having just like certain cords be really long and some be shorter. 
and I just went ahead and wrapped a little bit more and this is all really going to be personal preference. There's no right or wrong amount of wrapping. And then here I'm pulling on the cords to make sure there's no slack in between where the um, cords might be bunched up. And then you just go ahead and tie your little temporary knot and it'll hold everything in place while you do the next section. And what I did was I did three together on that first section and then the next one I did two together and then I did three and then I did two and then I did three. So it was three, two, three, two, three. <laughs> and I thought that looked good. So here I'm doing the next two over and I'm just untying that temporary knot and doing the same thing again. Getting everything where I want it, finding that longest cord and wrapping around and then just stopping whenever I think it seems like an appropriate amount of wrapping. So usually I did about an inch probably and it kind of, I wanted it to look natural so I didn't want to make it too perfect. You gotta think like a tree is, you know, it's not going to be perfect so you want it to look natural. And then um, I had already attached those two together. That's why they look like that. But now I'm attaching the third one. And you're just going to keep doing this for each section. And like I said, I did three and then two. And then here I'm doing three and then two and then three. So here's how it looked once that was all done. Then I decided I would take these two sections and attach them next. Then add that one, the one on the left, and then the one on the far right. So I'm going to start with these and I'm just doing that same thing again, untying the temporary knot. And then I hold all the cords together and find the longest one and use that to wrap so that I don't run out of cord for any of my cords. And then it's really that simple. You just keep wrapping, seeing if it looks how you want it to look and then continuing on. So that's what I did and then I just started adding in the next branches as I went until it all made sense <laughs> and sometimes I had to add a little bit to one branch and then add a little bit more to another one until they all just kind of fit together and looked the way I wanted them to. As I was working, I just kept pulling on the cords, the inner cords, to get rid of any extra slack. As you can see, there's like a little space there between the branches where it's not quite meeting up. So then I went ahead and pulled on them and that got rid of that extra space. And then I just continued wrapping away and tying my temporary knot whenever I got as far as I thought it needed to go. And here's my last branch that I was attaching to all the rest of them. So I just went ahead and wrapped it until it was long enough to reach. And then when I was happy with it, I wrapped it all together using the longest cord. And then when I was doing this last one, it is kind of a larger section since it's all the cords together. So I wrapped for a while with this cord and then um, whenever I felt like it was maybe getting a little bit shorter than I wanted it to, I swapped it out for another cord that was longer and I'll show you what I did. I just wrapped about to right there and then at this point I switched to a different cord and I'm just the cord I was wrapping with is right there on the side so I just kind of held it in place and then I started wrapping with this other cord that was longer and once you wrap it a couple times, it'll stay where you want it to. And then you could just wrap like normal. So that is what I did there. Just in case your cord starts to get a little short, you can just swap it out for another one. And you won't even be able to tell. So I wanted to leave plenty of room for the roots to be attached to the ring. So I didn't want to make this too long. And at this point I decided to flip it over and I used just a half hitch knot to um, secure my cord. And 
So I wrapped it around. I did it on the back because I wanted the actual knot to be on the back side. So at first it went on the other side and I was like, whoops, I guess I should have just left it on the front. Once I twisted it around a little bit, the knot did go on the back. So that is how I did that. And then I just kind of moved everything, made sure it was spaced properly. And now it's time to attach our cords to the bottom of the hoop. So for this part, I wanted to make it look like tree roots that were kind of like twisted a little and not perfect. So I took the front half of the cords, the ones that were um, showing on the front, and I started with those and I just moved those back cords out of the way so I could see what I was doing. And then I just kind of tangled them together so they were just oddly twisted, you know, no rhyme or reason to it really. And then you're going to attach it with a double half hitch knot around the ring. So there's your first half of your double half hitch and then you bring it around and then bring the cord through that loop and then tighten it up and it'll hold it in place. And there's the first one. And you're just going to continue doing that with each cord going to the right. And I was just making sure that they weren't just lined up right next to each other. You could do it that way. That also works. But I was kind of going for a more natural look here. So I just continued on and attached all of the cords on the front with the double half hitch knot. And then I took the ones from the back and I went ahead and started attaching those as well. I just did it that way so I knew that the front ones looked the way I wanted them to because I knew you'd be able to see them more. And then I kind of um, offset them and made the roots go more up and to the right just because the way the tree was leaning was kind of towards the left more and I wanted to balance it out a little bit. So that was just my personal preference. You can do it however you think looks best. You can make it more symmetrical if you like. But here is how it looked at this point. And I actually had a couple more cords on the back to attach, but moving on to the leaves, I found these really cool beads on Etsy and I'll link them down below in the supply list. But they're these really cute little glass beads that look like leaves. So I got green ones and blue ones, and then I just have a needle and some thread, and I'm just using thread that matches the macrame cord. Then I also had these cute little glass flower beads that I got at the same shop. And I wanted to add just a few of them. I ended up adding five and just kind of placing them just throughout. And I really liked how those looked. So here's how I attached the leaves. This is the back side, and I'm pushing the needle through one of the branches where I want to put my little leaf bead and then just bringing it through to the front. And then I didn't tie any knots or anything on the end of my thread. I just pulled it until there was maybe like a two inch section still sticking out like that. And then I went ahead and threaded on the leaf bead and these blue ones do have a back side. There's like a shiny gold part on the back. The, the green ones, it didn't matter. But I just threaded it through and then placed it where I wanted it. And then I went back down through a little bit next to where I came up so that the bead would lay the way I wanted it to lay. And then I pulled it back through. And then once I got the thread pulled all the way through, I made sure the leaf was laying where I wanted it to lay. And then I just took the end and then the main working thread and tied a knot, a really good tight one. And then I just trimmed the ends. And at first I left the ends longer. And later I'll show you, I cut them much shorter so you don't have to leave them that long. But here's all the green ones attached. And then here they are with the blue ones attached. And that's how it looks so far. And you see the thread ends are pretty crazy at this point. And we're gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> but I will show you how I did that next. Here's what it's looking like. And it was kind of a mess. 
So I took some tacky glue, and I knew I wasn't going to weave all those ends in. And I started with the, leaving the ends the length that they were, and I thought I'd just like glue the ends down to the back. But I quickly realized that these were way too long and it was unnecessary and I didn't, I was just making more work for myself. So I, after gluing a couple down, I went back in and cut them all down to just like maybe a half inch or so. And then I glued them all down to the back. And you can't see it from the front and here's what it looked like while it was about to dry. And as long as you don't have your glue on the front, no, you won't be able to see it. <laughs> And here is one of the flowers attached, and then I'll show you how I did that. So I took my thread, and this time I doubled it, but I still didn't tie a knot. And then I had my flower bead, and I had a seed bead. And this is the glass seed bead I used, if you're curious. And that was just to hold it so that it wouldn't come undone. And then I just inserted my needle through from the back wherever I wanted to put a flower. And then I brought the needle through, and then I left a little bit of um, thread, you know, a tail like I did before on the back so I could tie the knot. Then I threaded on the flower with the bottom end going first onto the needle, and then I threaded on my little seed bead. And then I went back. I put it all on there and then I went back down through the flower. So I moved a little seed bead out of the way and just went right back down into the hole of the flower and then I went down right next to where I had come out before but leaving a little bit of space so there so I knew it would catch some threads. And then I pulled it back through and made sure everything got lined up nice because the seed bead didn't quite want to lay down the way I wanted it to at first. So I poked at it a little bit until it was laying down properly like that. And then I flipped it back over and again just tied a really good knot just like I did with the leaves. And then cut the threads leaving about a half an inch long because we're going to glue them down to And then you can just do that for however many you want to make. I did five and I just placed them throughout. Here's how it looked once I got those done and I glued the ends down. And now all we have to do is address the fringe at the bottom. So since I have mine offset, I wanted to cut the fringe to kind of emphasize that. And at first I just freehanded it, but I wasn't really happy with how it turned out freehand because I just wanted it to look a little bit neater. So I took my tape measure and I went for seven inches. I just thought that looked like a good length. And then I went through and cut each piece of fringe individually and I measured seven inches down from the ring. That way it would be perfectly, you know, round or at least kind of perfectly round. And then I just tied an overhand knot in the end of each cord. I tried to make them pretty low down so that it was right at the end of the cords. And then this is how it looked. I mean, they're not perfect, but I, I thought it looked pretty good. And here is the finished product. And I think this turned out so cute. I love how it looks with these pretty little beads. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.